Bonus has a sternum contusion. From the incident, it is questionable for Game 3. The Warriors will miss Draymond's presence on both sides of the ball, especially offensively, where they're nine points per game worse without it. All right, Woj tweeting this this morning. NBA executive VP Joe Dumars tells ESPN on Draymond Green punishment, quote, here's what it came down to, excessive and over-the-top actions, conduct, detrimental, and a repeat offender. That's what separates this, where you end up with a suspension. He continues in the next tweet. Demarche ESPN on weighing the circumstances of the Warriors down 2-0 to the Kings in the series. You know what the situation is, but you have to set that aside and look at the facts in front of you. Repeat offender weighs as heavy as anything. Okay. <sighs> I just want to point out before we get into this subject, mm -hmm. the subject, irony of it. Um, I've known Joe Dumas for decades. Love the man. Very happy that he's in the position that he's in. But who is he a former member of? I was just going to say that. Wow. You feel like it's hypocrisy? Uh, wow. It's the Pistons and lame beer. Wow. Emma Horn. Right. Sally Isaiah, Rodman. Isaiah wasn't an angel. Isaiah. Yep. I mean, it, 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 listen, I, I think they don't, they don't get enough praise what they meant to the NBA because everybody talks about, you know, Boston and L.A. and then it's Michael Jordan. They're forgetting that the... Pistons interrupted everything. Obviously, the Sixers back in 83, back. but they're forgetting that the Pistons disrupted everything. But, my goodness, it's just the irony of that statement coming from a bad boy Piston. Ah, wow. All right. Wow. We'll, I'll talk to Joe about that. JJ, let me ask you this. What implications <clears throat> will this suspension have on the Warriors? Well, the implications in the short term mm -hmm. are, is that game three turns into a must win. If they can win that game without Draymond, I still believe they have a chance to win this series. If they go down 3-0, the street tells us it's over. It's, over. Um, it's particularly because Golden State is, is not a good uh, road team defensively. Let's talk big picture, though. Mm -hmm. and, and let's, let's just I, – I, I, I don't want to do the hypothetical, but let's just say the Warriors lose to the Kings. I think the long-term implications of this is that there's got to be a different – roster construction at those positions at the four and the five when the Warriors dynasty started in 2015 there were still a lot of teams I know I was on one of them that still played two bigs two non-shooting bigs and if you look around the league right now how many good teams play two non-shooting bigs I can think of one and that's Cleveland shooting bigs and if you look around the league right now how many good teams play two non-shooting bigs I can think of one and that's Cleveland right Evan Mobley and Jared Allen they don't shoot threes they don't space the floor okay but there's two guys are so good defensively, as are Draymond and Kevon Looney. I think the long-term implication is you can't go into next season with two non-shooters in the starting lineup because the rest of the league has caught up to you. And I think about Mike Brown, who spent years with Steve Kerr and has been in coaches' meetings in playoff series. And, yeah, you talk about the other team. You talk about strategy and X's and O's. You also talk about your own players. He's got a treasure trove of information stored up a scouting report that none of us have on the Golden State Warriors. And he's taking advantage of the fact that they start two non-shooters in the starting lineup. And we've seen that, that bear out. It's putting too much pressure. As good as Steph and Clay are, if you could be physical like the Kings have been, if you're going to allow that, it's putting too much pressure on them to make tough shots when you have two non-shooters in the starting lineup. I really believe that if they end up losing this series – there may be a change. And I don't know. I'm not saying it's going to be Draymond Green. I think Draymond Green is a Hall of Famer. He's one of the best defensive players ever. I think he's the best defensive player of our era. I think they should bring him back. Sign him to a long-term deal. As long as Steph Curry's there, they've got a window to, to continue this, uh, this run. But there's got to be a change. They need more shooting. As crazy as that sounds, as crazy as that sounds, they need more shooting. They need more spacing on the offensive end. There's nothing to disagree about with what you said, but you left a few things out. <clears throat> Number one, like you said about Draymond, he's going to look for a contract in excess of $100 million over four over the next four years or whatever. Personally speaking, in today's NBA market, I think he deserves that. Certainly not $200 million, but of course over $100 million in today's NBA market with elite as he is defensively, even though he's not what he was years ago, he's still one of the better ones today. Definitely. Whether or not they're going to do that remains to be seen because they pay Wiggins, they pay Poole. The other thing, here's what I think you left out. Kevon Looney doesn't necessarily have to start, but with Steve Kerr. Steve Kerr loves this man. 
loves Kevon Looney. Love him to death. No, I ever want him to go. I mean, he just he loves him as a player, loves him as a person. He says, I mean, it's like a hero to Steve Kerr for crying out loud. Steve Kerr loves this dude. That's a decision that they're going to have to make. And I don't. he's the kind of person, he's such class personified. He'll come off the bench if you need him. If you go out there and find that, that, that extra big that can do some things for you. Okay? So I wanted to bring that up. When you look at Golden State, and you're talking about those two bigs, that's one point. The other thing is, is that you left out the part about this with Mike Brown. You said in the first part of the show, J.J. Redick, that Draymond's been baited. Mm -hmm. well, who came up with that strategy? <laughs> that would be Mike Brown. Right. Find De'Aaron Fox didn't come up with that. Malik Monk didn't come up with that. So bonus with all the antics that he, he's known to pull off in Indiana and now Sacramento. He didn't come up with that. That's Mike Brown. See, I left that out. This man knows this team. He was an assistant coach for Steve Kerr. He knows Draymond intimately. He knows these players. If anybody can know how to bait Draymond Green, who would know it better than Mike Brown outside of the folks on the Warriors? So we have to understand that. And we also be clear, it ain't beyond them to bait Clay a little bit, too. Because Clay, obviously one of the greatest shooters we've ever seen. Obviously an individual that has walked around feeling underappreciated for quite some time. And deservedly so, because he is underappreciated. That man is great. But you can get Clay to a point, time to time, not when it really matters, but time to time. Where you could, you could egg him on a little bit and get him to get out of character and maybe four shots that he normally would be a little bit more patient about making that extra pass, getting it back, then shooting it then as opposed to launching in somebody's face. These are the kind of things that Mike Brown are doing. And that's what we need to pay attention to. He's tugging on their strings a little bit. And he's doing a hell of a job, clearly, because he's pulled it off thus far. Well, let's do one thing on the series first. Sacramento, they could have lost either one of these two games. Mm -hmm. I mean, in the first game, Curry shot three for 13 from three and had a wide open three to tie the game. And Wiggins had a three to win the game with 10 seconds to go. He had that wide open corner jumper. In game two, even after LeBron, after uh, uh, Draymond got thrown out of the game, and I don't even think he should have been, but after he did, the game was tied twice. And after Thompson made a three, they were down by a point. So it's not like Sacramento has won this game like the Cavs have, like last night. These games could have gone either way. So I think the Warriors have a lot of life left in them. I'm not sure if they're going to win, but I'm with J.J. I think they're going to win tomorrow night. they got a cause now. This is a world championship team in their home building against a novice team on the road with a cause. That is dangerous. Green comes back in game four. He's all fired up. And, hey, you know what? You, you, you have my back. Now I'm going to have your back. And, that, and Sabonis is not going to get a call. They're going to look at Sabonis like you wouldn't believe. I think this series is 2-2. Now, as far as the whole thing with bringing Green back, you know a lot more about the psychology of what the team structurally needs to do. I'm curious if maybe the Warriors have just had enough. You know what? I know you said earlier today that it's only been the one suspension in seven years, but this is a suspension. He did punch Poole that we all saw in training camp, and that was not just a tap on the shoulder. He punched him. That may have caused a little divisiveness in the, in, in the locker room. So you can make the argument the Warriors say, you know what? We won our four championships. Could have been more if he maybe didn't get thrown out of that Cleveland series, but he won off four championships. Maybe it's time to just move on and look at it a little differently. I wonder if Golden State's thinking about it from that standpoint. Um, I want to be clear. I, I'm not counting the Warriors out. I know I, I said I said they got to win. Tomorrow. Like, I'm not counting them out. I'm not counting Steph Curry out. I want to be very clear on that. I still mm -hmm. think the Warriors can win this series. Um, your question, have they had enough? The reality with Draymond, and we discussed this last year, is more contentiously than we are discussing this today. The reality is with Draymond is that he has always towed the line between uh, just aggressiveness, over-the-top antics, and competitiveness and basketball play. Like that's he's always towed that line, and sometimes he steps over the line, like he did Game One last year against Memphis, like he did in 2016 with the kicks and the LeBron play. You can't argue with the result of him living on the edge. You can't argue with four championships. You can't argue his value to this dynasty. And I, I believe this. If teams want to operate in good faith, you have to reward that. 
You have to reward that. Now, mm. hold on. Now, when you were talking about roster construction, I think one of the challenges, if we are talking moving, because I love Kevon Looney, too. Mm -hmm. I think yeah, he's right. extremely underrated. One of the challenges going forward with this new CBA is this new, uh, the luxury tax penalties, and, and basically it's hard cap. You right. basically can go two years uh, paying the luxury tax, and then it just, it's, so, it's so egregious, the, the tax, that you, you can't move beyond that. Joe Lacob obviously has shown that he will spend money, but I don't know that there's a Brooke Lopez out there, like when he signed in Milwaukee coming off his Lakers year for, what was it, $3 million? Like, that doesn't, ex that doesn't exist million. anymore. Right. Right. But he, he was the perfect fit for Giannis, right, playing alongside Giannis as a five. Those guys just don't exist. Those guys are going to get paid. So, really, you have to look at trading a player, I think, is, is ultimately – you know, if, if, if it ends up that where you've got to rebuild the roster around Steph, Clay, and Draymond, it ultimately is going to be only you thing, have to trade a player. The only thing that you said that I would challenge is that you don't only, and you're, you, you're too smart not to know this, J.J., you don't only get paid for what you've done. You get paid because of what is projected you will do. If they're looking forward, you know, he, all of these years that Draymond has been playing, and I support him getting that contract extension. Let me be very, very clear. I hope he gets it with Golden State. But understand, you didn't play for free all of those years you were winning. You got paid then. You got contract extension. And now they got to project what you're going to do three, okay. four, five years down the road and, if that's what you're signing for. this is for. where I'll challenge on something you said earlier, which is that Draymond is not as good defensively as he, as he once was. But he's Draymond still, Green, he's still Draymond, better than most. Draymond Green will make all NBA defense this year. Yeah, he's still better and, and than had the, And had the, anybody else on the Warriors had right. a good defensive year, no, no, he would no, have I'm made first team the top I'm only defense. saying when you pay him, if you sign him for four years, if you go to state, you're looking at what he's going to do for you for the next three to four years. It ain't just about what you did. That's the only point that okay. I'm making. You know that. All right, as far as the suspension, Joe Dumars is going to join Malika and the crew on NBA 